Hello, this is Sarah from smallbusinesssarah.com and today we're answering a question I received from a subscriber about how to record expense transactions within QuickBooks when you paid for that item, you paid for the expense with cash. And that's a great question. We're going to get to that in just a second. We are working in QuickBooks Simple Start Online in our sample company here. QuickBooks Simple Start is my recommendation for what program to use as a small business owner. You can check out QuickBooks Simple Start or get a free 30-day trial if you go to smallbusinesssarah.com forward slash QuickBooks and I will put that link down below. Also, if you are a new small business owner or an old small business owner, and you would like to stay up to date with new tax changes or accounting tips or just general small business tips, especially online business, then subscribe to my newsletter. I will put that link below as well. So let's get back to our question. In an ideal world, you would always use your business checking account, business credit card, or business PayPal account to pay for all business transactions. However, we are small business owners and sometimes we need to pay for something with our personal cash. A perfect example of this might be if you are maybe a vintage seller, a vintage Etsy seller, and you go to estate sales or garage sales to find items for your business, chances are you're going to have to pay cash for some of those items. You, you can't pay with a credit card at somebody's garage sale. There could be other examples as well. Just you make a mistake, you bought a business item, you used your personal cash, and now you want to make sure that you record that business expense because it is truly a business item and that is a tax deduction. It's tax deductible expense. So there's two ways I'm going to show you to do it. The first way, I tend not to do it for myself personally, but I have used this method before when I need to especially import large amounts of transactions that were paid for with cash or from a personal account um, by a, a business owner, a client. So let me show you that way first. And let me explain, let's see. So up here to the plus, if we wanted to just say, okay, QuickBooks, I want to add an expense here. Something that didn't come through on our bank feed from our checking account, PayPal, or credit card. What QuickBooks makes you do is they make you still select an account where this money is coming out of. Because if you spend money on something, that money had to come from somewhere, right? I mean, it didn't, the expense just didn't happen out of thin air. And if you know anything about accounting, which I, I realize you may or may not know, but there's always two sides to every entry. So if we have an expense, we have to have another side to it, which needs to be a bank account, a credit card, something like that. And I wish QuickBooks would give us an option for like an owner's investment, um, an owner's equi equity account that we could choose from on this drop down menu, but they don't. So one workaround is to create an account and I called it payable to yourself in this situation. Uh, let me go back to the other screen. In the chart of accounts, right here, which I got to the chart of accounts on the accounting tab over here, you'll see I have this payable to yourself set up as like a credit card. So in a way, I'm kind of fooling QuickBooks because I'm setting this account up as if it is a bank or credit card account, but it's not. It's something that I have created and I call it payable to yourself because it's a way to show that you were the one that invested this money into your business. So, so I created that account. You could create it right here, new, select 
you, you need to select like a credit card, not just like another current liability. Credit card and then name it, payable to yourself, payable to Joe Schmo, whatever. Okay, so back to our, our expense. Once you've created the account, you can select that your expense came out of that account. Um, I don't really know what, I'll just say advertising. And I'll say $5. And I think it'll make me choose a payee. Let's see. Oh, it didn't, okay. So now I have created that amount. Let me show you how that's going to appear, though, on your balance sheet. So if you go to reports, balance sheet, there is your liability, payable to yourself. So if we click on this, we can see the expense, advertising and marketing. That's where it went to. But it's going to appear on your balance sheet in a liability um, until you make an entry to pay yourself back for that amount. So you could let that account grow as big as you want. And then the next time that you took an owner's withdraw out of your business, like let's say you let this amount grow to $500 and then you wrote yourself a check for $500 out of your business. Uh, that's called an owner's pay or personal expense, an owner draw. You could just take this owner draw against this account. It's like, it makes it like you're paying yourself back for money that you have already invested in your business. Okay, so that's one way that we can do that. And I'm gonna delete that because in this sample here, I don't want that transaction. So I'm just gonna get rid of it now before I forget. <laughs> okay, so then let's go to the other way. The other way would be through a journal entry. So if you have several transactions well, it, this could be for single transactions too, never mind. One way that you could do this would be at the end of every month, grab all your receipts for items you paid for with cash. Do try and get a receipt, even if it's at a garage sale or an estate sale. Do mark on your receipt as much information as you possibly can. Clip all those receipts together for the month, and then you can make a journal entry. The journal entry would be, a debit to whatever expense account you want. So we were saying before, let me scroll down. We did advertising before, so we'll stick with that. And the reason why I chose 831 is like I said, I, I tend to, if I'm making a journal entry, I l like to do them oftentimes at the end of the month. And that kind of, that date sort of signals to me that this is a monthly entry of like monthly activities. It's just kind of an organizational way that I handle things. The other side of your entry would be an equity account. It would be owner's pay and personal expense. No, I am sorry, that is wrong. <laughs> it is an equity account. It would be owner contribution. So with this entry, we are saying we contributed personal money to the tune of $5 for a business expense that was advertising and marketing. And you could add a description. I would normally say something like paid with personal. And you can save that. And the expense would show up in your profit and loss statement, same as the other way. So those are two completely legitimate methods. If you would like to kind of see the adding up 
of what you have paid with cash personally and kind of pay yourself back for that out of your business, you can do it the first way I showed you where you set up the payable to yourself amount. If this you know, rarely happens, $5 here, $5 there, but you definitely wouldn't include everything, maybe the journal entry method appeals to you more. Whichever method appeals to you more, um, go ahead and use that method. I realize that there's could be some complicated things in this, some questions, especially when it comes to the owner's draw, owner's equity, owner's contribution accounts. So if you have questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Some of this is just underlying accounting foundations. So maybe you you can just you can ask me questions if you would like further explanation but some of it you know telling you that this is the owner contribution account is what you should use is just kind of um like i was saying underlying accounting foundations that i have um so you can choose to trust me i guess or or not that choosing an equity account in this scenario is the right thing to do all right, well, that's all for this video. It turned out a little bit longer than I was hoping or wanting. Hopefully, I didn't ramble too much. I think I always do. If the video was helpful to you, I would appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe, but please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thanks so much. Bye.